name's Moss. And we've seen the best worlds, bosses, characters, transformations, and even the creepy things in Banjo-Kazooie. But now it's time to take a look at the background. The subtle locations throughout the game that include all of our previously ranked beloved topics, but aren't talked about enough. The best areas to visit in Banjo-Kazooie. That being said, an area is a very vague description, meaning it could be something as simple as a small room to something the size of an entire level. And because of this, my picks in this list are very hard to technically limit to what is defined as an area. Things that I may consider to be an area may be different than yours simply because of how I experienced the game. If I breeze through a good chunk of the game, I might consider it in my mind to be all part of the same area, even though they were quite large and spread out. Whereas places that I got stuck in for a while, I might consider to be much smaller. But let's be 110% honest. Those locations probably didn't make this list. What a way to kick off this list. When we are starting off with one of the most beloved worlds in the entire series, you just know that this ranking means business. And sure, you could talk about the sand castle that holds the cheat codes, or maybe the peaceful area surrounding the outside of the mountain, away from any sort of baddies. Except for shrapnel just floating there, patiently waiting to detonate. But when you want to talk about memorable locations that leave a mark on your memories, nothing quite matches up to the majestic area that is the top of the island. The music softens a bit, you can hear the breeze blowing and the seagulls chirping, and my god, the view! You can see for fucking miles! And it's just beautiful! That yellow Jinjo sure knew where the right place was to get lost. Just perched on that offset tree enjoying the vacation life. Hmm. Maybe he didn't want to be saved. Poor little guy. Sorry, buddy. Hailfire Peaks is a mystical place. On one side you have a frozen glacier with sub-zero temperatures that houses organic life frozen inside giant ice cubes that would be perfect for any beverage on a nice summer day. With extra protein and fiber to boot. And on the other side of the mountain, a boiling volcano with molten rock spewing from every crevice like a bad day after Taco Bell the same time you come down with a sickness. Bad luck, my dude. But tucked away in this unrational region, amongst other things, are the secret areas that are hidden away just waiting to be discovered. And one of these places is the Icicle Grotto. Dark and shadowy like any other cave, but has enough light piercing through the silky ice to illuminate the place just enough to navigate. And you want to talk about secret hidden areas and collectibles? This place is full of them. I mean, they aren't really secret seeing as how it'll taunt you with prizes just on the other side of a sheet of an indestructible ice wall, but the means to acquiring these trophies is what makes this place just so cool. Just watch out for those imposter icicles that will try to keep you off their turf. They are fragile, but they're sharp as hell. Whee! I've said before in my Banjo-Kazooie Transformations video not only how fun the pumpkin is, but how important it was to your quest. And that little guy is the key to enter into Grunty's mausoleum outside of her mansion, as he is just small enough to fit through the hole in the door. This small shack pushed off to the side is a pivotal point in the game towards the end stretch, as it is where you raise the water levels in Grunty's lair to reach the top. And if you never managed to find it, your game would have come to a screeching halt. This shack is a perfect combination of the spooky extension of Mad Monster Mansion, the pumpkin, housing of important switches, and motherfucking mumbo! all drizzled with the mixtured tunes of Mad Monster Mansion and Grunty's lair hidden behind a locked gate tucked off to the side down a hill that makes this place feel as if it was a bonus location that wasn't necessary, but we still got anyway. And damn, I just love those. <laughs> Even though places like the long elevator shaft in Grunty Industries with the different colored floors is pretty cool, and seeing just how close to the bottom of the shaft that you can fall to before catching onto the cable as close to the ground as possible from the very top is extremely fun and exhilarating, I'd have to say that my favorite place in Grunty Industries, and the one that takes the number 7 spot on this list, would have to be the giant fan room in the basement. In this wind tunnel you can also challenge yourself to make it to the acid pit room that's right next to the blades while braving the gusts. I've never actually managed to do it, and maybe with the super banjo cheat and the talent trot it might be possible, but the other ways you could also entertain yourself in this room were pretty fun. 
You could jump up in the air and get taken by the airflow like Jackie Chan in Operation Condor. Because that's exactly what this room reminds me of. And how it's hidden in the basement and you need to navigate through a vent like James Bond in order to get to it makes it feel just that much more special. I've said before in my Banjo-Kazooie Worlds video that Jolly Rogers Lagoon is probably one of the most beautiful worlds around. Whether it's the sunny, happy town area above on land, or down under the mysterious waters with all of the artifacts skewed throughout this crystal clear abyss, Jolly Rogers Lagoon is probably one of the most breathtaking worlds to visit in the series. And one of the places that stood out to me the most was the peaceful seaweed sanctum. Other than the imposter seaweeds that try to attack, hmm, something here seems familiar, this place is extremely peaceful. Nice music, zen atmosphere, and a Jinjo to rescue. Seriously, these little guys know where to hang out. And even though it's in the depths of Atlantis, it's not saturated with water. So you can actually walk around this place and explore it quite easily. Getting a nice break from the swimming. And I know it's not part of the seaweed sanctum, but it's close enough to it that I might as well count the ancient swimming baths and the electric eel lair on the spot as well. They share most of the same characteristics, only they are less zen and more of a campfirey, cozy feel. The kind of place that I'd like to have my secret hideout. Jam Jars knows what's up. Plus, there's a paper in the ancient swimming baths that you have to glide to get. And who doesn't love to glide? In the intro to this video, when I said that areas are very vague and defined differently to everyone based on how we experience the game, I was mainly talking about this entry. The last part of Grunty's Lair, for me at least, is considered to be after the 450 music note door straight through to the top of the lair right before Grunty, where you find things like Rusty Bucket Bay, the Click Clock Wood area, the Mad Monster Mansion jigsaw puzzle, and the last Cheeto location with the glass-like pillars stretching from the ceiling. I know this is a pretty vast area that has several rooms in it, but I'm always excited to venture through this part of the game. It has my favorite worlds in it, and the end of the game and what you've been working towards is now in sight. Some of the best things I discovered in these areas are the underwater tunnel leading from the Rusty Bucket Bay Jigsaw to the Mad Monster Mansion Jigsaw that you can't actually go through because of the metal grate in your way that you also can't destroy. Kinda pointless, but a nice teaser I guess. Even when it's teasing an area you've already been to. Another memorable moment was when I was adventuring around the Click Clock Wood area to find a sliver of light at the base of the wall. Very strange. As I went to investigate, I disappeared through the long grass down a hill in a tunnel to the other half of another dink pot that I couldn't find for the longest time. No. Fucking. Way. And just to think, every other time before that I went through the dreaded whip crack tunnel. Sometimes with gold feathers, sometimes with blue eggs, and sometimes the hard way. So yeah, I was happy to find this dink pot in the secret tunnel behind the long grass. So very cool. Speaking of sacred mythical places that took forever to find, none were quite as infuriating and taunting as that of the ice train station on the ice side of Hailfire Peaks. And there were several reasons for this. First, you know it's there when you push the giant button to open the doors with the snowball. Then you see it taunting you in the menu select screen in Chuffy itself, but can't select it because you need to cool the engine first. And just to poke fun at your jealousy ever so slightly more, you can actually see the Jiggy sitting at the end of what appears to be train tracks made out of solid ice just out of reach on the other side of an indestructible sheet of ice. And yes, it's indestructible. Believe me, I've tried to break it every way I could think of, and even got quite desperate about it. Aloha! But it was well worth the wait, because the anticipation of this place just made it feel that much more important. The first time I exited Chuffy the train into the station itself, I couldn't believe it. I just walked around and on, and looked in the first person view for minutes actually made it here. It was kind of a surreal feeling. I was beginning to think this place didn't actually exist. When it comes to places that I didn't think actually existed, stop and swap item locations come to mind. 
These areas were teased in Mumbo's magical pictures on the vacation beach island, but to actually get to them was a challenge and a half. After a quick Google search and an intricate cheat code entry, I was on my way to find these sacred mythical locations and FINALLY nabbed those items I wanted for the longest time. Now all of the secret areas make this list, but if I were to narrow it down to my favorites of the bunch, I'd have to say the Rusty Bucket Bay Captain's Cabin, Nabnut's Table during the wintertime, and Mad Monster Mansion's Cellar. These three areas were my favorite in the game, and it's suiting that I also like their stop and swap egg areas the best. Probably cause and effect at work here, but when you have the host world theme mixed with the secret stop and swap music, hidden away off to the side in an off the grid type of area with mysterious items at play, how can you not get hyped up? When it comes to being places that make me happy, peaceful and relaxation comes to mind. Places like Treasure Trove Cove, a nice calming beach to kick back and enjoy the quiet and listen to the soothing waves in the sun. Or Jolly Rogers Town Area, a peaceful little community that's just next to the water. Kinda like the nice rich part of town where everything is clean, pleasant, and everyone is friendly. But you know what's just a tiny bit better than that? Just on the outskirts of town where it's both relaxing and peaceful. And nothing sums up just the outside of town quite like the Turtle View Cave. This is the place in all of these games where I'd like to build my house and live. Close enough to town, but far enough for solitude, and damn, loaded with tons of adventure. Not to mention how much I love that view. There's nothing quite like having your own little private lake right in your own backyard. Tip Top had the right idea. Just, yes. Hearing that epic organ music, you already know where this is heading. It's no secret how much I love Mad Monster Mansion, and my favorite place in this level is inside the church. Let's start off with the feeling you get once you enter this location. It's not unsettling like the rest of the world outside, and is really quite soothing. The music plays a big part in that. Plus it helps that the pipe organ is my favorite musical instrument. It gives off a majestic aura, and is a nice change of pace from the scary, almost check over your shoulder type feeling of the rest of the world outside. Even the haunted Motan isn't hostile or angry. He just likes playing his masterpiece, and enjoys your company as you join into his harmonic art. Also, climbing up to the top of the rafters to hit the grunty button, seeing the beautiful art of the stained glass windows, and that fucking music! Take a guess to what's number one on my top 10 favorite Banjo-Kazooie songs. Just an overall amazing area that I never tire of visiting. This has been Moss, and quite frankly, if it wasn't for the excellent atmosphere that these areas give off, then our nostalgia for this great franchise just wouldn't be the same. These places are just kind of there, we pass through them all the time, yet they still give off the perfect blend of atmosphere and tone to cement itself from the moments it captures within it to be engraved forever in our nostalgic databases. So in the meantime and in between time, stay tuned for more.